Mr. Lake, I'll start, start with the roll call this evening. Ballman? Here. Bird? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Reinflesch? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Van Here. Wangerman? Here. Werner? Here. Weniger? Excuse me. 14 present. We have a quorum. On that, we'll call the meeting to order and ask for approval of the minutes of our March 1st, 2004 meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Are there any additions or subtractions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Turbo aye. aye. Opposed? There being none, the motion passes. The minutes stand approved. I guess first I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. We're doing this a little different to facilitate not having to move the screen up and down. I think this should work out for this presentation quite well. First, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for coming to the final uh, committee of the whole meeting for this council year. Uh, tonight's presentation by the Sheboygan Department, Police Department is on a program that is very important to our community and its future, the School Resource Officers Program. This has a direct impact on the young people in the city of Sheboygan. I believe there are many misconceptions regarding this program and hope we will be able to come to a better understanding of the school resource officers, their impact on our children, our community, and our future as a great city. And I would like to introduce Chief Kirk to kick us off. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I say thank you once again for allowing us to be uh, present again in front of this committee, the whole, uh, to present uh, another brief uh, program uh, on this program, I think it's extremely important, the school resource officers. Uh, I have asked uh, them to be present tonight to answer any questions you may have of them. Um, I wish to say thank you to uh, Lieutenant uh, Johnston, who supervises, directly supervises the uh, school uh, resource officers. Uh, once again, I don't want to take too much time. We have a number of people present here tonight. I just wish to say thank you once again for, for listening. Uh, when it comes up for a contract uh, negotiations or renegotiations in the end of June, I know last year there were some issues that came up, some um, issues and questions, and I wish at this time to at least, at least give you a brief knowledge or a brief presentation to get you up to speed as to what the program is, uh, what it consists of, what it doesn't consist of. It's advantages, disadvantages. Uh, as I said before, I strongly support this program. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to at least, if I could, let the people who are present here tonight identify themselves. So if you have a question, you can direct it to them. Or if you have a question for me, certainly uh, you can direct it towards me. But uh, Terry, if you could first uh, start off. I'm Terry Meyer. I'm the school resource officer at Urban Middle School. Dan Mower, I'm the resource officer at North High School. Steve Lockwood, I'm the resource officer at Forest Manning and Farnsworth Middle Schools. Jeff Johnston, I'll be presenting uh, the slide presentation, and I'm the supervisor for the school resource officer. Bruce? I'm Bruce Christensen. I'm the police uh, liaison officer at South High School. Deputy Chief Bob Weiss. Rich Meansville, associate principal at Sheboygan North High School. Todd Nebruin, associate principal at Farnsworth Middle School. Steve Edge, High School Principal of South. Rick Schultz, the Principal of North High School. Al Calbrays, Assistant Superintendent, Sheboygan Area School District. Bill Branson, Director of Behavioral Health Services at Sheboygan Memorial. I'm Russ Grableski, I'm the Principal of Horace Mann Middle School. Al Shervin, Deputy Chief Operations. Don Sorensen, Detective Lieutenant Sheboygan Police. Uh, Thank you for uh, all of you for coming tonight, and uh, Jeffrey, if you wish to start us. As the chief indicated, um, we really appreciate the opportunity to have a, a chance to speak to you, um, clarify some questions on what I think is an often misunderstood program, but yet a very valuable program for the entire community and uh, as the chief pointed out especially for the youth of our community i'm going to run through these slides and then um, we want you to use this opportunity to ask any questions that you have of me of of any of the people that are here and hopefully 
that uh, everybody will leave here with a little better understanding of what this program is and isn't. The first slide I'm putting up is the high school student population. Um, oftentimes, I, I think we underestimate just how big of a population our school resource officers are dealing with. You'll see that um, the two high schools are, in effect, the size of small cities in and of themselves. Um, and we have one officer assigned to each of these uh, high schools. And um, by no means is that overstaffing when you look at uh, cities of that nature would, would have several officers that would patrol a community of that size. Go to the middle schools and uh, probably the most significant thing of this slide is the close proximity there is to the populations of each school. Why that's significant is Urban has a school resource officer assigned and Horace Mann and Farnsworth it's necessary to split the time between those two schools. Um, Officer Steve Lockwood is responsible for those schools and he's forced to split his time um, because that's the only available staffing that we have at this point. So that uh, we felt that was significant. We weren't sure how many people were aware that that was a situation that we were splitting time and uh, wanted to make sure that that was identified to everyone. This is our current staffing. We have one officer assigned to North High School, one officer assigned to South High, one officer assigned to Urban Middle School, and then, as I pointed out, one officer splits time between Farnsworth and Horace Mann. Another significant uh, point that I think is often either misunderstood or, or just hasn't been brought out enough is that the school district provides funding for two full-time police officers. Um, in effect, we would lose two officers if, uh, if we broke away from this current um, contract and, and the way this system is set up. So there are two full-time police officers that uh, are funded by school district funds. And um, I think that's a, that's a very significant uh, statistic. This next slide is a sampling of the complaints handled by our four uh, resource officers. This is from September 1st through mid-March 2004. Officer John Winter compiled these. There's always going to be some that slip through the cracks as far as being miscoded and stuff, but this gives you a rough idea of the, the vast volume of complaints that they handle. And I'm sorry, and more significantly, um, let's see if I can go back to that one. More significantly, I think the bottom part tells you the variety. A lot of these cases, if they were uh, offenses committed by adults, it would mean jail time, it would mean significant uh, penalties. These, these school resource officers are dealing with some serious problems. Um, some of them are of a nature that possibly could be handled within the school, but many of them are criminal acts that need the intervention of a police officer. And if the police officer wasn't there, we'd have to pull an officer out of a district, off the road. We'd have to get the body somewhere because these are, these are incidents that couldn't just be ignored and couldn't just be handled um, within the school uh, structure itself. Now I'm going to go into um, the Sheboygan Police Department. The SRO is the acronym for School Resource Officers, so you'll see that throughout the presentation. I'm going to go into their duties and responsibilities and why they're significant and how our operations would be affected if uh, this program was not in place. Um, and I'm going to give you some examples of, of how significant these things are. On an average, our school resource officers see three students per day, and it's for a variety of issues. Some of them are listed there, truancy, smoking, harassment, theft, drugs and alcohol, and sex assaults. You'll see that it runs the gamut. Could some of those be handled without police intervention? Probably. Possibly, but do some of them definitely need police intervention? Yes. And again, if we pulled the school resource officers out of the school system, the police response would have to come from somewhere, and that would be the district officers. And it would put a tremendous burden on an already um, overworked staff that's, that's understaffed on many days. And to try and pull somebody to um, handle these responsibilities at the school would be extremely difficult. On a weekly basis, the school resource officers have contact with social workers, parents, probation agents, administrators, guidance counselors, alderpersons, and other police agencies. 
Why this is significant is Chief Kirk has instituted a philosophy throughout the Department of Community Policing. Nothing is more important with community policing than collaborative efforts. And this points out true collaboration. They work with a wide variety of people within the structure of government, within the, the public itself, um, like it says, guidance counselors, counselors, parents. Could a district officer do some of this? On a small scale, yes, but the district officers would have other responsibilities. They wouldn't be able to establish these liaisons at South, at North, at Urban. They would have other responsibilities. Here, our uh, school resource officers are making significant strides towards their community policing effort. Lastly, the school resource officers attend athletic ev events, uh, dances, and extracurricular activities. The significance of this is our resource officers bring back valuable information to our patrol staff. Some of these might seem like minor events, but our resource officers are inside the schools, know the culture of the school. They know if a particular athletic event is going to prompt <coughs> possibly some hard feelings. Maybe there's a particular rivalry. They hear and know things that are going on that might require additional officers to be there. They know what type of staffing we need. Dances, for instance, can at times bring out some gang activity. The officers, by being in place in the school, provide a, a tremendous amount of intelligence and uh, allow us to put our resources where they're needed. Continuing with the responsibilities, they obviously assist with the apprehension of truant students, uh, both at the school, immediate school area and away from school if need be. Um, they work with families and school officials to arrange counseling for troubled students. Um, if you have questions on that, I'm sure that school administrators and school uh, personnel are prepared to speak on the effectiveness of this. Um, Bill Bronson is here uh, with mental health and can speak highly of the interventions that he's seen throughout his years that he's been affiliated um, with the school resource program. And um, as I said earlier, that I'm sure they'll be very happy to uh, answer any questions or speak to those issues. Um, the officers maintain contact with and have a relationship with students and learn of any potential problems and take action to prevent criminal activity from occurring. This is so important and so valuable to how we allocate our manpower and our resources. These officers are there on a daily basis and what they intervene in and prevent, you saw the statistics on how many complaints they actually handle. You can probably double that or more with what they've intervened and prevented an officer from having to go there and investigate and follow up on. And by intervening and preventing and having these relationships and contacts, they're heading off what could be countless man hours of follow-up investigation that's always necessary. If we get there after the fact, after the event occurred, now you have to interview witnesses, you have to re-interview people, and you have to get to the bottom of it. These officers are there and intervene and actually save us a lot of work. They work with school staff to develop policy and procedures regarding school safety, and I'll go into some more issues regarding school safety. But they're a valuable legal resource for the school administrators and staff as they make these decisions. When it comes to school safety and school resource officers, they obviously patrol the school grounds. They investigate any criminal activity that's occurring or is reported to possibly be occurring. They monitor and investigate gang activity. This is extremely important. Um, I think it became very obvious during the mid-90s, we took a very proactive approach as, as the city of Sheboygan and city of Sheboygan Police Department. We initiated a gang unit and took the approach that we wanted to gather intelligence, we wanted to stay on top of things. I think we've done an excellent job of that. This is one more offshoot to that. They gather the intelligence, help us stay on top of things and try and stay ahead of the game. Do we get caught off guard occasionally? Absolutely. But by having them in place, they're able to monitor and gather information for us. They deter, deter loitering by unauthorized visitors and trespassers. Extremely important. When you're dealing with juveniles, you're dealing with a group of individuals that are vulnerable, and especially if you have adults, young adults on there, it's so easy to victimize this age group and having the uh, school resource officers on the campus to try and deter that type of activity is invaluable. They assist with medical emergencies. They're a first responder. They're trained just as our officers on the street are and certainly they're one of the first ones there if the schools require their assistance. And they assist in the physical control of disruptive or violent students. It, 
prevents them from having to wait for a, a squad to respond, possibly from a, a quite a distance, or if all our cars are tied up, they, they could have extended waiting periods. Here, in the panic of having a violent or disruptive student, we have officers on campus that can respond more quickly. And they identify and gather information on students suspected of drug activity. The significance of that became apparent just in the last couple months. Um, there was a well-publicized um, event in which a student from South High was arrested during the course of a, a drug warrant and a subsequent search of the home. Um, Officer Christensen at South High had knowledge of this individual's activities and had been feeding that information to the drug unit prior to the, this uh, event taking place. So their ability to identify and gather information on students is, uh, is a tremendous asset both to our patrol division and to our drug unit. And they apprehend wanted or runaway students. Um, a number of times, officers will come to roll call and they'll say, I'm looking for so-and-so, I'm looking for this person, this person's wanted. Bruce, could you go check? Terry, could you go check if they're in school? And um, these school resource officers respond immediately and give us the opportunity to um, take those people into custody when otherwise we would have to do a lot of other research. They're there to help. The ultimate in school safety is a school resource officer role in a critical incident. By critical incident, I'm referring to an overwhelming incident such as Columbine. We certainly hope that nothing like that will ever occur again. Um, now that it's several years removed from uh, everybody's memory, things have died down. But in the aftermath of Columbine, school safety was an extremely hot topic. Um, the possibility of having a critical incident at any school in America was foremost on anybody's mind. And by having a school resource officer in there, it's obvious that they'll likely be the first response. They'll be that first person that can possibly engage and try and stop this critical incident. They're there to protect the students and staff. Probably a, the most important is they are able to co coordinate our patrol response. It's going to be chaotic no matter what happens in an event like this, but now we'll have somebody on the inside that can coordinate this response. And the last thing, and something they've all engaged in is instituting and participating in pre-planning. I think our school system, our school district, and our city is probably ahead of the curve uh, as far as the number of cities. Our emergency response team practices in each one of the schools throughout the district. The school resource officers have been instrumental in setting up that type of program, giving the school uh, or giving the emergency response team an opportunity to know the buildings, giving us an opportunity to pre-plan. We've rehearsed at Horace Mann and actually had a simulated shutdown where we lock the building down so that the staff and the students know what could be expected in that kind of circumstance. Again, we always hope that something like that will never occur, but I think, again, we're ahead of the curve by being a little bit more prepared than other cities. Some of the prevention efforts, again, this is something I think the school administrators and, and school officials can speak to even uh, better than I can, but um, our resource officers conduct class presentations on criminal justice and, and related topics. It adds to that bond that they have with all the students and with the staff and creates a, a positive environment and hopefully um, creates that bond that heads off some, some future problems. They initiate contact with local businesses directly affected by school day operations. A classic example of that is the new um, uh, stores at Northgate. Um, Officer Maurer recognized the need to contact them, make them aware of what they might expect from the schools at North High, or from the students at North High, and what they could expect from him. He distributed a letter, he distributed his business card, so they could come to him, have a first contact, and head off some problems. If they were having some difficulty with the students, they knew they could go to Officer Maurer. Now that, that's something that we would lose if we couldn't have these, these officers in the school. They plan special youth programming, again, a preventative thing, a thing to establish a different view of, of law enforcement and break down some of those um, concepts and, and make them more willing to talk to officers. They work with citizens living near the schools to address issues that may arise in neighborhoods. Um, I think Alderman Vanderwille, it, it, you've experienced that firsthand. We had somebody up near North and North and Urban, um, Officer Maurer and, and Officer Meyer. Um, listen to the complaints in that area, and are trying to address them on an as-needed basis. So they work closely with the citizens. 
talk to civic groups about youth issues, address the parent-teacher organizations on a variety of issues. They're there to address whatever needs may arise. If it's something in the aftermath of something like Columbine, where they need to be reassured about the safety of our schools, our officers are there to address that. If they need some information about drug awareness, drug prevention, our officers are there. If they need some advice on safety issues, bullying issues, our officers are there to address and help out. Um, school administration and school resource officers, our school ad administration has invited our officers to serve on uh, school district committees, planning committees, assist in the planning and implementation of programs in each and every one of the schools. They serve on building consultation teams to develop strategies to assist students and plan for a safe, uh, healthy environment in the schools. They're a resource for legal questions from the school staff. That's obvious. I mean, who better than a, than a police officer to advise the school staff rather than having to make a call down to City Hall, track somebody down, trying to find a resource. They've got a resource in the building that can address legal issues and, and give them the perspective of a law enforcement officer on, on how to handle certain situations. They instruct at uh, staff in-service training as needed. If the school administration perceives a need that can be best addressed by law enforcement, our officers are there and available to address their staff in-service training. Some of the challenges for school resource officers nationwide, and they're quite significant, and this, this isn't just in Sheboygan, nationwide, 16,000 crimes per school day in the United States. S schools all across the country have recognized the need for school resource officers. This is an expanding program. Um, rather than backing away from it, more and more cities and schools are embracing the concept and expanding their programs. There's national and statewide school resource officers associations being formed, and it's, it's a thing that's moving forward and, and a valuable tool. There are more special needs students. Um, I think, Al, you said that you would speak to that issue if you have questions on, on what we mean by that. But this, again, is nationally, and, and Al Calabrese confirmed that in our city it's no different. There are more special needs, more at-risk students that our school resource officers need to deal with on a daily basis. And they're more prepared to deal with it than just a district police officer that happens to be assigned to the south side of the city or the north side of the city that has a school in it. Not all of them. The question was, are they all at Stripe? No. And if maybe you can speak to that. I, if, do you want to wait till I'm, I went through a couple more slides? Or would you like him to address that, that sure. issue now? Sure. Special aid students are housed throughout the district. Uh, Stripe is a game. Sure. <laughs> Everybody can hear uh, special needs students are housed throughout the school district. Our most severe uh, emotionally disturbed students are housed at Strive. Uh, but every building, every high school, every middle school do have emotionally disturbed programs for students. It's just a level of severity. But our special needs students are everywhere. Thank you. Um, next issue, alcohol, drugs, and gangs. I guess that needs no further comment. Um, it, it's clear that those are issues facing um, schools and communities nationwide, and Sheboygan is no different than that. The fear of violence. Um, there are many studies done that having a school resource officer does aid in uh, that confident feeling that families and students have um, that their children are being educated in a safer environment. And they're there to address, like I said earlier, issues of bullying and, and those type of things. This, these final couple of slides I, I want kind of put in there for food for thought, and it does speak to what the uh, mayor just addressed. Um, the former U.S. Secretary of Education pointed out that we have students bringing firearms to schools, must be removed from the regular classroom. Um, they are continue to be concerned about what happens to those troubled students who are expelled from school. And that doesn't mean just for bringing firearms, but if you're expelled from the normal school, shall we say, or the traditional school, where do they go? 20% of them attend alternative schools. We, as I, I'm sure many of you are aware, 
have um, alternative high schools, we call them Strive, and alternative school in our main uh, building down here at 830 Virginia Avenue. Well, that school, since uh, September 1st through mid-March, we've had 171 police-related complaints responding, responding to Strive and Alternative. Um, and there's no school resource officer presently assigned to that school. I hear it on a daily basis. The officers that are assigned to that district, they know that they're probably gonna be there at least once, sometimes more than once. Often after the fact, after something has occurred, it's gonna require man hours of follow-up, sorting through witness statements that are sometimes <coughs> co-mingled with uh, uh, stories that they've heard from other friends because we're there after the fact. And um, it's something that I, I've heard that we probably could use a school resource officer in that position um, because of the at-risk students that are there and the, the calls, the volume of calls that we get. And that's all that I have on the, the slides. <clears throat> Excuse me. Each of these slides that I had is in the um, presentation that I left at um, each desk. In addition to that, there's two letters behind there, one from uh, Carla Vorpal, um, a school psychologist, and then another one from uh, Jeff Craning, um, a private practice psychologist who's had exposure to our um, school resource officers and their intervention programs. The last three items are newspaper articles. Two of them are from outside of the city of Sheboygan, one is from inside the city of Sheboygan. The two from outside I thought were significant. One deals with a grade school, or several grade school students who brought a gun to their grade school and hid it in the sandbox with an intent to assault um, a fellow student who teased them. This is grade school. And then the other one is a middle school student who committed suicide in front of his fellow students. Um, and I, I kind of skipped over it during the, um, the slides, but if you look at the slide where we uh, talk about the number of complaints, our officers up to mid-March when these statistics were um, tabulated had done what we refer to as a Chapter 51. They had done seven of those Chapter 51s. And Chapter 51 is an involuntary mental commitment where the officer is confronted with a, an individual, in these cases students, who are so despondent or suffering such mental trauma that the officer feels that they're a danger to themselves or others to the point that they need to be involuntarily committed. Now, up to mid-March, they dealt with seven of them. Now there's been 12, and that was as of a couple days ago. So, I mean, the, the statistics are continually mounting. This is a, a significant number. It's a, a time-consuming thing. But once again, it's a thing where these officers are in the schools on a daily basis. They get to know these students. They know when the danger signs are there and they intervene. And who knows you know, how many lives they've saved um, in, in the process of doing that. Um, and then the last article that, that I put in there is a local newspaper article on the South High student that's facing the drug charges. Just a reminder that it is happening in our community. And I think you'll find on one of those newspaper articles, I believe it was the one um, where the child brought the gun and hid it in the sandbox. The final quote is um, that this is a very small city and um, the school administrator says, this is just a reminder, this can happen any place at any time. And I thought that was a, a very significant quote. Um, certainly we want to entertain any questions. We've got the entire group here and they're all just Chopping at the bit to answer questions and talk Jeff, to you. Jeff, first so. I would thank you for this at this point. What, what I'd like to do now is lower the screen so that I can turn the microphones on for council ask questions and you can answer them. And each way it will go. We'll try it. Travis, Travis said enough. Call Russ. Call Russ at home. If I could just fill some of the time, I'll take advantage real quick. Um, I want to say thank you uh, once again. I want to say congratulations to those aldermen who uh, have been uh, reappointed, reelected. Um, I think one of the greatest programs uh, that I'm extremely proud of is the school resource officers. 
I had my two daughters at uh, North High School, and it was very, very, very reassuring to know we had an officer up there, to know that if there was a problem, I could go talk to him or they would relay information to me as far as what's going on. And, and that's just an excellent feeling deep inside to know that these guys do care. They give 110%. And we, we do have the granddaddy of all school resource officers in Bruce Christensen. He's been around the longest in the state. <laughs> he may look like it, but uh, <laughs> um, they, they are very committed to this program. And I think if you look at those statistics, those, there were eight weapon complaints that they had dealt with uh, during this time period of the probably a six-month period of stats. Uh, so there are weapons that we do find, and there are uh, drugs and, and everything of that. So that's all I have to say, Mike. Uh, thank you, Chief, on that. Uh, Council, open the floor to any questions and uh, see if we can get them answered. Alderman Manny. Thank you. Uh, two very simple detail questions. Number one, Chapter 51 is applicable to uh, young adults up until the age of 18. Is that correct? And secondarily, do officers wear a uniform in school? I don't think so. Chapter 51 is a uh, emergency commitment. It's a mental commitment, and it's of anyone at any age. Um, it could be young adults, could be adults. Um, it's just when someone is uh, threatening uh, injury to themselves or to others, or is of a risk to themselves. As far as uh, uniforms, uh, they do not. However, we have. Uh, uh, tweak the program in a sense that we require them to work the road uh, periodically in uniform. Um, so it's a consensus. I believe we've discussed this over the years, and, uh, and there's some thought on wearing of uniforms. There's some thought not wearing of uniforms. Um, I think at this point we are still of the, the belief that we do not wear uniforms in the schools. But I don't. I don't believe the school system would be opposed to that. I think at uh, the present time, when we discuss this, and perhaps uh, if you, guess, you guys wish to put some in, but basically, no, they do not. Uh, Alderman Moody. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. How many kids are in that STRIVE program? Uh, I would say, I think it's about 120, so. Yeah, there's 120 students that I was saying, but uh, I believe that was 171 complaints we had from Strive already this during that time period. Bill, that was the number you were looking at, 171 complaints. <coughs> Strive is becoming a, a concern for us uh, in the sense that we're beginning to get called there more and more and more. And it's of, of need to be, there's some needs here that need to be addressed. Um, it's, it should probably have a school resource officer or someone tied, tied to it. I just wonder if, uh, Betty, were you uh, referring to how many are in the, in, the, in the program in the central facility but not involved in anything else, right? Yeah. Alderman Stephan. Uh, I, too, wanted to thank uh, the department for the presentation. Um, I won't put the chief on the spot tonight, but I think, you know, just looking at this, we can see there might be a need for a full-time officer at Farnsworth or Horseman, obviously that was pointed out. The Strive case pointed out, and we need officers for the new drug unit. And I think you know it's incumbent upon you at some point in time to prioritize those needs to us because I don't know how we could possibly prioritize them if you don't. Um, Fishtailing off that question, I guess is I am aware that the school board. I, mean, I don't know if this is better for Alderman Perez or maybe Mr. Calabresa. The school board has like a plan in case we drop our funding, and I guess I don't know if they'd want to articulate that. I mean, obviously it's not going to go to zero. From what I'm told, I don't know exactly what it is, but I guess you know that might be part of that prioritization process. I just like to hear that. I'm I'm not uh, aware of the program, so. First, I'd like to say any plan we're putting in place will not replace what we have. Um, I just want to make that very clear. We feel strongly enough about having school security and school resource officers that we are looking at other options of what we would do to provide some of the same services. They will not be exactly the services we have, but for our staff and for our students. That plan is not complete. We were kind of hoping to get a sense of tonight where we may be headed, uh, but we are looking and exploring a variety of options at this time, but I don't have enough details to make 
that of any value at this point. Okay. Would be Alderman Groff. Yes. Um, has there been any thought given to or uh, any um, possibility of utilizing the Sheriff's Department in, in conjunction with, with uh, the program here to do a county-wide thing? Uh, the county, I, I can ask uh, Jeff, however, the county does counteract, which is a different program. Um, they do do some, well, it's drug education. However, they do, they are involved in some schools. I'm not sure their involvement in, in uh, maybe Bruce or uh, resource officers, they don't have any now at this time? Okay, they did at one time, okay. Um, so no. Haldeman Wangaman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a comment, if I may. It's not hard to see that drugs and associated problems are increasing in the schools and on the streets. Now, I would like to remind the members of the council and the city that the police department is at present three men below their authorized strength. And by authorized strength, I mean this council right here authorized them to have a certain number of men, and there are three men below that number. So I think it's time that we bring that up to date. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wangaman. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, question about money. I'm wondering about uh, high school events, especially athletic events and uh, the such. Um, is there overtime that goes into that for our uh, officers, or is there kind of a comp time, kind of a flex schedule in place? I'd have to ask uh, Deputy Chief Shervin. However, uh, the overtime, if it's accumulated, is paid for by 50% by the school district. So um, I'm not sure, Jeff, I'm not sure in the amount of overtime or the amount of hours you put in at these school events. Um, I don't know the hours, but there would be overtime involved on, on occasions. Um, I think it's significant to note that the many of those are not if the school resource officers weren't in place, there would still be a police presence at many of these events, especially if we anticipated problems. So there would be overtime incurred and sometimes it's actually reduced by the presence of the school resource officers saying we maybe only need this many. Their intelligence is, is tremendously valuable to how we, how we staff. But if, if they weren't in place, that there might be times that we actually overstaff because we would have to be prepared to, to do that. Second money question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Um, in our schools, uh, the high schools, we have um, students from the, uh, the towns of as opposed to the city as well. Uh, the school system brings in revenue from both the towns and the city. I'm wondering what number of students are not from the city but from the towns. We're paying for two officers, the school system basically paying for two. What's that ratio of students outside Sheboygan City to those within the city? I'm not aware of it. Um, however, they're all from the school district, but you, you make a point where the city police officers are in. Right. Um, I'm not sure. I really don't have the exact number of students. I know we have pe uh, students from the town of Wilson, town of Sheboygan, Mosul, and a variety of others. Um, I really don't know that exact number. I could get it for you, and you know, I can have it to you tomorrow if, if you would like. Okay. I thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Berg. Now, the STRIVE program, that's under the jurisdiction of Health and Human Services, right? Joint. It's joint. It's joint between the school district and Health and Human Services. Now, most of those instructors, Nada, over there are were on the county payroll, aren't they? Um, I would say the majority of them are actually Sheboygan Area School District employees. Um, 25 percent probably might be Health and Human Services. Well, there I see where they could uh, come in, come into play there uh, as far as financially, you know. The county could be putting in some dollars for, uh, for an officer there if there was an officer needed, that, like you say. Thank you, Alderman Burke. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Graf. Thank you. Um, um, third money question. Um, 50% is paid for by the school district. The other 50% is paid by the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, any further questions from the committee? 
I'm Mayor Schramm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief and <clears throat> Alan, uh, on your plan, you're reorganizing the program right now. As you said bef a few minutes ago, you're looking at If we have redoing. to do without the SROs, we need to put some plan in place. Okay. How soon will we know of the plan? I guess our response is when we know whether we're going to have the SROs, <clears throat> okay. we'll finish the plan. The four you have now or the another one to go to the we're just from our standpoint we see the need for more we'd be happy to contain what we have okay we support it we'd love to have more uh, our board has not talked about the fact that if we even expanded by two whether we could afford to expand by two which would be expand by one for us um, we have not discussed that okay so we're just hoping to maintain the four we have at this time okay and chief you're well aware of all that you're in the discussions I've been made aware of the uh, the concern of the student populations at the middle schools uh, we spoke of this issue probably uh, two years ago uh, into next or last year where all of a sudden the issues began to uh, to arise uh, especially now since September um, strive is becoming a concern and we're gonna have to look at this because we have had 171 complaints out of strive from September till March 1st, or whenever those, those dates were. It's a concern. Now we're spending a lot of officers' times there, and if we speak on budgets and of dollars, Al, don't listen, but if we're gonna spend this number of, of hours sending officers there, it would only make sense to me that if there's a real need, a real concern, then let's address the concern and have the school district pay for half of it. Because there is a need, because we're sending our officers over there a lot. It's like uh, Lieutenant Johnson said, almost on a daily basis, sometimes twice. Uh, now they do have some employees there. Uh, I know there is uh, one, one officer from another community who works there on a part-time basis, or at least used to him. I would think he's still there. I'm not sure. However, it's a concern. It's a need. And we're going to have to do something to address this. So uh, there is a great benefit I see in the school district paying half of the salary and half the overtime. Um, of that particular officer. Well, I guess that's what I'm asking you. If it's a concern, you know, let's not wait too long. If this is going to be pro one of your priorities and, and with the school district working together, let's lay it out on the table far enough ahead so when we get down to the budget, we know and mm -hmm. we have to prioritize that this is going to be part of our budget so we're not going back and forth. It got kind of lost last year in the shuffle a little bit and there's a lot of discussion on what we're going to fund and what we weren't going to fund. You know, I'd sooner be up front so we know that sure. ahead of time. Absolutely. I, I, as Al was saying, I think we were looking at seeing what sort of response we had here tonight to see if, in fact, there was a concern about the elimination or if there's concern, was this not enough education? Uh, do you need more information? Certainly we have had the opportunity. We, we brought as many people as we thought were needed here tonight to answer any question. And no, you got us on one about the outside students, so um, we, we don't have all the answers, but certainly, as was mentioned before, we are down 300 TO, and I think if we're gonna look at uh, the school resource officers, that may be increasing that TO. Um, certainly, I think, uh, Bill, you speak on it, you know, we have to set priorities and where we're going, and um, as, as you said, we were uh, somewhat, uh, lost last year well part of that was our responsibility trying to keep the budgets down but we're starting to see it's time to to really address some of these issues and we will have that information out by budget time and it probably would be the same conditions as we have now for our four we have now with we could utilize out that person or those people on the road again if need be I I, I believe that's an excellent uh, revision to the program we have it maintains their skills on the road and maintains maintains their skills on the computer and the equipment that the officer uses and if something happens they know exactly what they should have known years and years ago and they can be tied right in I, I would believe that would be part of it yes thank you I uh, thank you mayor and chief one thing that would be added on there that that's the school system pays half of wages overtime and half of the benefit program yes, also. Yes, you're right. So it is a true 50-50 split. Yes. And I think Lieutenant Johnson and, and then Alderman Groff. Yes, I'm sorry. I, can 
And I was remiss in uh, mentioning one important thing. It was the Baptist pamphlet. Jeff, uh, could you use the microphone, please? One important thing is, the, I believe it was the last page, or two pages, in uh, the handout that I gave you. It's called Cops Fact Sheet. That's the um, community policing office. And they've made a commitment to have officers, school resource officers in schools. This is a grant program that we could get another potential of 50% of the officer's salary um, recovered from the federal government. And if we'd work in conjunction with the school district, um, we could really make an effort to try and minimize the cost of adding another officer. It would have to be an officer in addition to the ones that are already in place. And 75% of his responsibilities would have to be in the school, which is, is not an issue. That would be what we were seeking. So uh, it's, I put it in there as food for thought. There are other alternatives, funding alternatives. There are some time deadlines on this. So if you would tell the chief that we were going to pursue that avenue, um, we certainly could you know, make efforts towards obtaining some of these grants. But it's, it's food for thought to, to try and uh, fund these through an alternative method. And I'm, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that that was in there. So. Thank you, Lieutenant Johnson. The Alderman Graf. Thank you um, for, uh, for mentioning that because I was wondering if there was any grant programs that we could um, tack on to in order to get additional funding because I think basically it's going to come down to how much additional funding you can get in order to get new officers and so forth. Um, right now there are four SROs. Correct and two of them are paid for completely by the school system. Right. And the other two are paid for totally by the taxpayers from the city of Sheboygan, correct? Correct. Okay, and funding is going to be an issue um, as well as if, uh, bringing your TO up to, um, to full, uh, full complement is going to be an issue with that too. And um, if full staff means uh, that you can have an extra two officers in, in the school and an extra officer on the road for the drug program or, or whatever, you're going to have to make that determination and, and tell us where we can get additional funding like these grant programs that may be available or sharing something with um, another co community, uh, their police department or with the sheriff's department or something like that, at least the way I'm looking at this. Because we need, we need financial help wherever we can get it. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Price. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for putting together this presentation. That, uh, it's been very beneficial even to me, and I do have some, um, some background on it, and I think a lot of the questions have been answered and benefits of the program have been highlighted. We talk about tax money from three political entities here, the city, the county, and the school, but we have to keep in mind that it's all tax money. It's all tax money from all the people who live here. and. Uh, and benefit from our from our services. The other thing I think I, I should note that uh, is one of the, uh, the issues that came up is that this is an excellent example of shared services. We've got three political entities sharing services, providing funds for a program that truly benefits the, the future of Sheboygan, which is our students. Thank you, Alderman Perez. Yeah. Alderman Manny. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Simple personnel question, wondering about uh, the officers, is their vacation schedule limited to vacation schedule for the school, or are they free on occasion to take off at other times in the year? If so, how is that covered? I used to supervise them. Um, I believe the rules are the same. I'd have to double check. But I believe their vacations are restricted to when summer, or the school vacations are, that they are needed in the schools. That's when they take their vacations, when the school does, and during the summer. Correct? For the most part. And a second question. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for uh, school administrators here tonight. Uh, I'm a mentor with a Strive student and uh, have been for two years and have found it to be quite uh, positive and he's doing very, very well and will graduate from South High School this May or June. And uh, my question is, uh, the kind of the success picture of Strive students who do follow the program and make a uh, big improvement and do well and graduate kind of on time. Um, it's, I think it's important to highlight the value of the program and that's one way of, of underscoring that. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Uh, be no further questions. Chief, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I, would, I know Bruce doesn't speak for himself very freely, so I remember a story he told me a while back. He says that uh, he went to a wedding and the woman 
the bride went up to him and said, thank you very much. If it wasn't for your involvement, Bruce, I wouldn't be here today, nor would I be being married. So they have some excellent benefits. They are there, they're needed. And uh, Jim, I think you speak loud, loud and, and clear. We need to look at how we can fund this. And we will come up with some ideas. Uh, Mayor Schramm. Thank you, Chief. Mayor Schramm. One last question. You know, we see statistics of, of the problems and stuff in schools. Can anyone come up with some statistics of the case, like you just said, of the ones who get out of the strive and stuff that really do well in life? Can we pinpoint a few of those? I think that would help greatly. Graduation. Uh, it's important to know, too, strive isn't the only thing there. There's an alternative high school. Right. So, you know, there's almost 200 kids really out of Central. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put, uh, try and get the community numbers, the township numbers for you. I'll try and get the graduation rate for alternative and strive. And I'll send that to. Please? If you'd also send a copy to us, Al. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and the reason I ask is I did start working with a Strife student also as a mentor, and off and on, it's been kind of a rocky road with the young man, but I think he's doing fairly well. Just, it'd be nice to hear how they go on afterwards. I think people will be surprised at the success rate. Good, I'd like to see that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief, anything else? Well, I have nothing else. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has anything, but uh, I'm done. Great. Well, first, I'd, I'd like to first thank you, Chief Kirk, Lieutenant Johnson, uh, all the members of our uh, SRO, uh, school resource officers, uh, principals, Mr. Calabresa, everyone that came here, the vice principals. It's, it's nice to see everybody here and, and be here for this presentation. I think a lot of times people forget that the world really has changed a lot since we were in school. It's not exactly as friendly and wonderful as it used to be. Uh, we had our problems then too, but I don't think they were of the same magnitude we see today, and that's evident to everyone. I think Sheboygan is well ahead of the curve when it comes to this program. Uh, if you have communities out there that are first looking at it now. So I think we've done a great job so far, and as everyone knows, this is something that I strongly support. Uh, so I thank you all for being here tonight. I guess uh, it's been both an honor and a pleasure to serve as your committee of the whole chairman this past year. We've had numerous meetings to provide information and education, not only to the council, but to the public. And I would encourage the coming year's chairperson to continue using the Committee of the Whole as a tool to provide edu information and education to the council as well as to our citizens in Sheboygan. And I would just thank you all for your support. On that, uh, we stand to adjourn, sign, and die. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Sure, what's I? And adjourn. Thank you.